Welcome everyone. Let's begin our lesson for today by going over the learning goals and success criteria. First, what are we learning? We're learning how to select the most efficient method of finding a solution to a system of linear equations, how to find the slope and y-intercept of a function from an equation, how to graph linear functions using slope and y-intercept, how to graph multiple linear functions on the same plane and find the point of intersection, how to solve systems of equations algebraically using the elimination method, and how to solve systems of equations algebraically using the substitution method. How are we learning it? Through the systems of linear equations notes and the systems of linear equations assignment. When can we use this information? To find economic solutions to financial problems, such as income versus expenses and supply versus demand, and to determine the best way to complete a task when there are multiple ways to complete the task, such as putting up a new fence in the backyard. How do we know we learned it? By getting a score of 4 on the Systems of Linear Equations assignment. Now let's take a look at our agenda for today. We will begin by going over our learning goals and success criteria. While we do that, you'll fill out your Get It Started. Once you've completed the Get It Started, we'll go over it together and answer any questions that you may have. After that, we'll go over the Systems of Linear Equations notes, and then I'll give you time to complete the Systems of Linear Equations assignment. Once you've completed the assignment, we'll go over it together and answer any questions that you may have. At the end of class, we'll go back over our learning goals and success criteria while you fill out your before you go. Your only homework for tonight is to continue working on the systems of linear equations and inequality study guide and any incomplete assignments that you may have. Let's take a look now at the systems of linear equations notes. The notes begin with the learning goals and success criteria. Now let's talk about slope. What is slope? Slope is a rate of change involving x values and y values. Slope is known as for being the change in the dependent variable over the change in the independent variable. Now what does that really mean? So that really means that slope is the change in the y values over the change in the x values. So it's always y over x. And the next part you need to know is the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the point where the linear function crosses the y-axis. So we have a line here, and we can see that the y-axis goes here. So where do they intersect? Well, they intersect right there. That is what we call the y-intercept. So in this case, our y-intercept would be 2. Slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form is written as y equals mx plus b. And what does that mean? m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. y and x are my variables that stay variables so that I can plug numbers in and see what they come out to be. So m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. Now how can I remember that? The easiest way I remember this is m represents the slope because it's a slippery slope to get hung up on your x. So think about it in terms of relationships. People that are involved in relationships and they break up, there's usually that one person in that relationship that's always hanging on to the relationship that's already dead. That's the slope. That's M. It's a slippery slope to get hung up on your ex. They are not together anymore. But the M is always trying to hang on. Notice how close they are. So M is trying to hang on and it's a slippery slope to get hung up on your ex. Now B, on the other hand, is alone, not attached to anybody. B is lonely. And lonely people ask the questions, why am I alone? Why does no one want me? Why does no one think I'm cute? That's B. B is always asking the why questions. Those are the why intercept questions. So that's the way I remember it. It's a slippery slope to get hung up on your ex. And why am I alone? So that's the way I remember slope and y-intercept. Now, let's go ahead and pick out the slope and y-intercept from an equation. So we're given an equation, y equals 2x plus 4. And we want to know what is the slope of that line. Well, we know that the slope is the one that's attached to its x, right? So it's a slippery slope to get hung up on your x. So the one that's attached to the x in this case is 2. So the slope is the y-intercept is the lonely one. Why am I alone? Well, the lonely one is 4, so my y-intercept is 4. 
So that's how I pick out the slope and y-intercept given an equation. So look at another example. We have y equals negative 3 halves x minus 3. Well, same thing. It's a slippery slope to get hung up on your x. So the slope is the one that's attached to the x, which is negative 3 halves. So that's my slope. And my y-intercept is the lonely one. Well, the lonely one in this case is negative 3. So b is negative 3. So that's how I find the slope and y-intercept from an equation. Now, how do I graph a linear function? Well, first thing I need to do is pick out my slope and my y-intercept. Well, in this case, my slope is negative 1 half because that's attached to the x. Now, my y-intercept, notice there's nothing here. There's no lonely people. So how do I say none in math terms? Well, that's 0. So my y-intercept is 0. So now when I graph this, the first step is I plot the y-intercept. Well, my y-intercept is 0. So I'm going to go along my y-axis and find 0, which is right here. And I plot my point. The next step is I'm going to use the slope to plot my second point. Remember, this is change in y over change in x. Or you might have heard it in the past as rise over run. We're going to talk about it as change in y over change in x. So my change in y is negative 1. So I go down 1. And my change in x is 2, so I'm going to go to the right, 1, 2, and plot my point. So now I have my first two points. The next step is just to connect the dots and draw a line between them. So I'm going to connect the dots. And now I have a linear function that is graphed that goes through 0 and has a slope of negative 1 half. There's a video here also that shows you how to graph linear functions in Desmos. So you can go ahead and watch that. Now, how do we determine the correct method? So, first of all, we need to discuss what methods we have to solve systems of equations. So the first one is graphing. Now, graphing works best if the functions are already in slope-intercept form. We don't like putting things into slope-intercept form. So, if they're not in slope-intercept form, then let's use a different technique. But if they are in slope-intercept form, graphing is a great way to go. So this is usually best when both functions are already in slope-intercept form. And that looks like y equals mx plus b. Substitution is our second method. Substitution usually works best if one of the variables is already isolated. So we have y equals something or x equals something. So if one of those is isolated already, then we can just take that value and just plug it in. So substitution usually works best if one of the variables is already isolated. For instance, x equals my plus b. And lastly, we have elimination. Elimination usually works best if the equations are written in standard form, meaning the x and y's are on the same side. And that looks something like this. mx plus ny is equal to b. So this is how we can determine which method is the best version of what we need to do. Now let's take a look at how we can graph systems of linear equations. So all this really means is we're going to graph both of these lines at the same time. So on the first one, we'll go ahead and graph this. So we're going to plot our y-intercept, which is negative 2. So we're going to go down 2 and plot our point. And the slope is 1 third. So we're going to go up 1 to the right 3, plot our point, and connect the dots. So just like we did earlier, that's the same thing we're going to do now. Now, we're just going to plot the second line on the same graph. So my y-intercept for this one is 3. So I'm going to go up 3 and plot my point. And my slope is negative 1 half. So I'm going to go down 1 to the right 2, connect the dots. And notice now I have a point where they intersect, which is right there. That is considered the solution to the system of equation. Now let's talk about how we can solve these systems using substitution. So we have two equations here, y equals 2x minus 3, and x plus y is equal to 6. So the first thing we're going to do is isolate one of the variables, which means we're going to get one of the variables by itself on one side of the equal sign. Well, the nice thing is we already have that right here. We have y isolated. So we know that y is the same thing as 2x minus 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the value on the other side for y into the other equation. So I have x plus y is equal to 6, but y is really equal to 2x minus 3. 
So I'm going to plug that in. So now it says x plus 2y minus 3 is equal to 6. Now I can solve for x. So I combine like terms. I get x plus 2x is 3x. So I have 3x minus 3 is equal to 6. Then I'm going to add 3 to both sides. And I get 3x is equal to 6 plus 3 is 9. Now I can divide both sides by 3 to get x by itself. And I get x equals 9 divided by 3 is 3. So there's my x. So that's the x coordinate of where they cross. Now I need to find the y coordinate. So I'm going to plug it into one of the equations. It doesn't matter which one. I'll use this one, x plus y equals 6. But x is really 3, so I'm going to plug in 3 for x and then solve for y. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, and I get y is equal to 6 minus 3 is 3. So when x is 3, y is 3, and that's the solution for both of the equations. Now what happens if the variable is not already isolated? So that's our goal is to get one of the variables isolated. Now if they're not isolated, we can go ahead and take one of the equations and move everything away from one of the variables and that will isolate it. So in this case, I'm going to take the equation y minus 2x is equal to negative 3 and I'm going to isolate y. So in order to do that, I'm going to add 2x to both sides and I end up with y equals 2x minus 3. Now it's isolated. Now I can go ahead and plug it into the other equation. So I have x plus y equals 6, but y is really equal to 2x minus 3. So I'm going to plug that in for y. So now it says x plus 2x minus 3 is equal to 6. Now I can go ahead and solve. So I'm going to combine like terms. So x plus 2x is 3x. So I get 3x minus 3 is equal to 6. I'm going to add 3 to both sides to get rid of this. So I get 3x is equal to 6 plus 3 is 9. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 3 to get rid of this 3. And I get 9 divided by 3 is 3. So x equals 3. Then I plug it into the other equation and solve. So I'm going to pick either equation. doesn't matter which one. I'll pick this one. And I'm going to plug 3 in for x. So I get 3 plus y is equal to 6. Subtract 3 from both sides to get y by itself. And I get 6 minus 3 is 3. So x is 3 and y is 3. Now let's talk about how we can solve this without having to graph. So if we're given something like this, 3x minus 2y is equal to 24 and 3x plus 2y is equal to 12, we're going to go ahead and solve this using what we call elimination. So here are the steps. First step is we're going to check for opposite x values or y values. Now opposites mean they have the same integer but with opposite signs. So for instance, we have a positive 3 and a positive 3. Those are not opposites. We have a negative 2 and a positive 2. Those are opposites. So these two represent opposites. So if we have opposite x or y values, we're going to go ahead and add the equations together. So we're going to add the entire equation. So we'll add these up. So we add 3x plus 3x and we get 6x. Negative 2y and 2y is equal to 0. Right, so that's the elimination part. We eliminated the y's. And then 12 plus 24 is 36. So we end up with 3x is equal to 36. Now we're going to solve for x. So 6 is being multiplied by x, so I undo it by dividing. So we divide both sides by 6, and we get x is equal to 36 divided by 6 is 6. So that's x. Now we know the x coordinate of where they cross, but now we need to get the y coordinate. So we're going to plug 6 in for x into one of the two equations. It doesn't matter which equation you pick as long as you plug in x as being 6. So we'll go ahead and pick this one. We'll pick the first one. And we're going to plug 6 in where x is. So instead of being 3x minus 2y is equal to 24, it's going to be 3 times 6 minus 2y is equal to 24. So 3 times 6 is 18. So we get 18 minus 2y is equal to 24. We need to get rid of this 18. So we're going to subtract 18 to get rid of that. And we're left with negative 2y is equal to 24 minus 18 is 6. We'll divide both sides by negative 2. And we get y is equal to negative 3. Now let's take a look at another example. 
So we're going to check for opposite x values or y values. So we have a positive 1 and a negative 2. Well, they have opposite signs but not opposite values. We have a negative 1 and a negative 1. So again, we don't have opposite values. So if we don't have opposite values, we're in trouble. So what we need to do is we need to create opposite values. We need to multiply either one or both of the equations by some number to get opposite values. So in this case, the easiest looks like it might be the y's because we could just multiply one of these by a negative one and that gives us a positive y and a negative y. But we could also do the x's. We could multiply this whole thing by two. That gives us a positive two x and a negative two x. But we're gonna go ahead and do the top one by negative one. If we multiply the top one by negative one, we get positive y and negative y. Now, here's the deal. Anytime we multiply this, we have to multiply everything. So that's the x's, the y's, and the constants. Everything's gotta get multiplied. So when we do that, we get negative one times x is negative x. Negative one times negative y is positive y. And negative one times 11 is negative 11. So what we're left with now is negative x plus y is equal to negative 11, and the bottom one didn't change. So now, notice we have opposite x and y values. So now we just follow the steps we did previously. So then we're going to add the equations together, and we get negative x and negative 2x is negative 3x. These cancel out, and we get negative 11 plus negative 19 is negative 30. So we have negative 3x is equal to negative 30. Now we just solve. So we divide both sides by negative 3, and we get x is equal to negative 30 divided by negative 3 is positive 10. So there's our x value. Now we're going to plug that in to one of the equations and solve for the y value. So I'm going to go ahead and use my new equation. I can use the new equation or any of the two that I started with. I'm going to just use the new equation. That's fine. So I'm going to plug 10 in for x. So this is negative 10 plus y is equal to negative 11. I add 10 to both sides to get y by itself. And I get y is equal to negative 11 plus 10 is negative 1. So y is negative 1 and x is 10. Let's look at another example. We have 5x plus y is equal to 9 and 10x minus 7y is equal to negative 18. So again, check for opposites. Well, 5 and 10 are not opposites, and 1 and negative 7 are not opposites. So I need to create opposites. So I could multiply this one here by negative 2. That would give me negative 10x and 10x. Or I could multiply it by 7, and that would give me 7y and negative 7y. I usually want to multiply by the smaller number because it keeps everything a little easier to manage. But it doesn't matter either way. This time, I'm going to multiply by negative 2. So I get negative 2 times 5x is negative 10x. Negative 2 times y is negative 2y. And negative 2 times 9 is negative 18. So now I have negative 10x minus 2y is equal to negative 18. And the bottom one just drops down. So I have 10x minus 7y is equal to negative 18. And now I have opposite x values. So I can go ahead and add the equations. These will cancel out. I'm left with negative 2y plus negative 7y is negative 9y. And negative 18 plus negative 18 is negative 36. So now I just need to solve for the variable. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 9. And I get y is equal to negative 36 divided by negative 9 is positive 4. So that's my y value. Now I need to plug it into one of the equations to solve for the x value. So I'll use 5x plus y is equal to 9. And I'm going to plug 4 in for y. So now this says 5x plus 4 is equal to 9. Well, now I need to solve for x. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. And I get 5x is equal to 9 minus 4 is 5. Divide both sides by 5. And I get x is equal to 1. Now let's take a look at another example. This time, though, we're going to notice something's a little different than the last one. So it says 5x plus 4y is equal to negative 30, and 3x minus 9y is equal to negative 18. So we begin, like always, by checking for opposite x values or y values. So 5 and 3 are not opposites, and 4 and 9 are not opposites. So we're going to have to create opposite x or y values by multiplying. Now on all the previous ones, one of the coefficients was a factor of one of the other coefficients. 
So we were able to just multiply one of the equations. Now what we should notice though is, I can't multiply three by anything to get five. And I can't multiply four by anything to get nine. So I'm actually gonna have to multiply both of the equations now. So I can pick either the x values or y values. Now the y values are gonna get really large if I start multiplying by nine. So I'm gonna use my x values. And I'm gonna multiply the top one by negative three. That'll give me negative 15 and the bottom one by five, which gives me positive 15. So now we have a negative 15 X and a positive 15 X. And then we're gonna multiply that times everything here. So negative three times five X and negative three times four Y and negative three times negative 30. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. So five times three X and five times negative nine Y and five times negative 18. And when I do that, I end up with negative 15 X minus 12 Y is equal to 90 and 15x minus 45y is equal to negative 90. Now notice I have opposites, so now I can go ahead and add the equations. My x's will drop out, I end up with negative 12y plus negative 45y is negative 57y, and then I have 90 and negative 90, which is zero. So I'm left with negative 57y is equal to zero. I divide both sides by negative 57 to solve for the variable, and I get y is equal to zero. Now I'm just gonna plug that back into one of the equations and solve for x. So it doesn't matter, I can use any of the four equations now that I created. So I'm just gonna use this one. So I have three x minus nine y is equal to negative 18, but y is equal to zero. So I plug that in. Now I have three x minus nine times zero, which is just zero, is equal to negative 18. So this just drops out. I'm left with 3x is equal to negative 18. Divide both sides by 3, and I get x is equal to negative 18 divided by 3 is negative 6. Let's look at another example. We have 3x minus 2y is equal to 2, and 5x minus 5y is equal to 10. So again, I'm going to check for opposite x or y values. 3 and 5 are not opposites, and negative 2 and negative 5 are not opposites. So I need to create opposite values. Again, I can pick the x's or the y's, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna go ahead and choose my x values. So I'm gonna multiply this one by negative five, and this one here by three. So that gives me negative 15x and positive 15x. Now I can just go ahead and multiply. When I multiply this out, I end up with negative 15x plus 10y is equal to negative 10. When I multiply this one out, I end up with 15x minus 15y is equal to 30. Now I have opposites, so I can just go ahead and add them. The x's cancel out, and I'm left with 10y plus negative 15y, which is negative 5y. And negative 10 plus 30 is 20. So I'm left with negative 5y is equal to 20. I'm gonna solve, divide both sides by negative five, and I get y is equal to 20 divided by negative five is negative four. Then I'm gonna plug that into one of the equations and solve for x. So I'll pick three x minus two y is equal to two. I'm gonna plug negative four in for y. Then we'll combine these so we have negative two times negative four is positive eight. So we get three x plus eight is equal to two. Subtract eight from both sides. And we're left with three x is equal to two minus eight is negative six. Divide both sides by three and we get x is equal to negative six divided by three is negative two. Now there's a video here that shows you how to check systems of linear equations in Desmos. So go ahead and watch that video. Let's talk now about how we can use Desmos to check our work when dealing with systems of linear equations. So first thing we're gonna do is go to desmos.com, which is here, and we're gonna click on graphing calculator. Now this allows us to type in our equations over here. So let's go ahead and put in an equation. So let's say it's y equals two x minus four. So there's our first equation. Now we're gonna type in our second equation. So we're gonna to go to the line below it and let's say it's y equals negative two x uh, plus four. So there's my two lines. And if I go to where the two lines intersect and click on it, I can see that it gives me the coordinates of exactly where the two lines intersect. They intersect at x equals two and y equals zero. So this would be the solution to my system of equations. And I can do this by inputting any two equations 
and then going to the point of intersection and clicking on it, it will tell me what the coordinate of that is with the X coordinate first and the Y coordinate second. So this is how you can check your work using Desmos when dealing with systems of linear equations. Let's talk now about how to access your assignments on IXL using SB Link. So what you'll do is you'll click on the link that takes you to your SB Link, which should look like this. And you're going to log in the same way you would log into your computer. So the first part for your username is going to be the first part of your email address without the at sbcusd.ca.us. So it should be your last name, first initial, middle initial, and then the last four of your student ID. Then for your password, it's the same password you use to log into your Chromebook. From there, you'll go ahead and click sign in. And it should take you to a page that looks kind of like this. You're going to go find the link that says IXL, which is right here. And I'm going to go ahead and click on that link. And it should take me to the IXL login page. So it should look like this. At the top right corner, it should say welcome and then your name. If it does not say your name, then you're not logged in and you won't receive credit for your work. As long as this is good, you can go ahead and close that tab out. And then you can go to your Google Classroom. And then you'll go and find the activity, which is here. And I'm going to click on the IXL link right here. And this will take me to the assignment that I need to complete. So that's how you log in to your assignments on IXL using SBLink. Let's take a look now at the systems of linear equations assignment. Our assignment begins with the learning goals and success criteria. If we scroll down, there's a link here to SBLink. Go ahead and click on that link and sign in. This will allow you to access your IXL activity. Once you've done that, come back to this page and click on the link to access the IXL assignment. When we click on that link, it should take us to a page that looks like this. So it tells us to graph the two systems. So the first one says y equals negative 3 fifths x plus 5. So we're going to go ahead and graph that. So our y-intercept is 5. So that's there. And our slope is negative 3 fifths. So we're going to go down 3 to the right 5. And there's our first one. Our second one is y equals 2. So we need to go here to the bottom and click on this equation so that it graphs this one. And we're going to go to where y is 2, which is here. And it doesn't matter what x is, so y is always 2, so it's going to be a horizontal line. So there's our two equations graphed. And now we're going to solve the system. So we can see that they cross at x equals 5, y equals 2. So we're going to put in our solution as x equals 5 and y equals 2, and click Submit. It tells us we did a good job. My SMART score goes up, and then it gives me a new question. Now, you're going to continue to answer questions until you get a SMART score of 80. If you miss a question, it's okay. You'll just keep answering questions until your SMART score goes back up. Once you're done with this assignment, you'll go back to your Google Form and click Next. This will take you to your Before You Go. Go ahead and fill out your Before You Go, and then submit your work on Google Classroom.